Good morning. Welcome to Kenyatta University. My name is uh, Professor David Minja, Acting Dean, School of Humanities and Social Sciences. I take this opportunity to welcome all our first year students to Kenyatta University, and in particular, the students joining our school, that is the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. The school is made up of the Dean's Office, it has eight departments and one institute. The departments in the schools are literature, linguistics and foreign languages, sociology, gender and development studies, geography, history, archaeology and political studies, Kiswahili and African languages, philosophy and religious studies, psychology, and public policy and administrations. Those are the departments housed in this school. The school also houses Confucius Institute. Um, as much as the Bachelors of Public Policy and Administration is in our school, only students who have been admitted to this program are allowed to take the units from these departments. You realize that in other departments, you can accurately take units across departments, depending on how you want your degree combination to, to be. For example, you can have a combination, a BA, that combines Kiswahili and history, or history and sociology and the like. But when it comes to Department of Public Administration, only those students who have been admitted into this program will actually be allowed to take units from Department of Public Policy and Administration. The Dean's Office is responsible for the running of the school in liaison with all the departments and the institute that I had mentioned earlier. The Dean's Office is also the one responsible for linking all the departments and the institute with the university management. So our role uh, in the Dean's office is to link the teaching department and the institute to management. We are currently offering several programs that range from certificates to diplomas, undergraduate programs, masters and PhDs offered by various departments. Our certificate courses include a certificate in French, German, Japanese, and Chinese languages. We also have several diplomas that uh, last for one and a half years or 18 months. These are diploma courses in Japanese language, German, or French. You can take a diploma in those languages. We also have a diploma in crime management and prevention and a diploma in disaster management. All the eight departments that uh, I had mentioned earlier offer undergraduate programs as well as postgraduate programs. And therefore, we, ha we therefore have various Bachelor of Arts degrees offered in those different uh, departments. For example, we have a Bachelor of Arts degree that uh, specializes in different fields so as a student, you can actually take a, bachelor's, a Bachelor of Arts degree that specializes in history and geography, or religious studies and history, depending on the combination that you want to take. So that is one area, a bachelor's de Bachelor of Arts degree with various combinations drawn from various departments. We also have specific Bachelor of Arts degrees. For example, we offer a Bachelor of Arts degree in Gender and Development Studies. We also offer a Bachelor of Arts degree in Counseling Psychology. We also offer a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology. And finally, those are, we have Bachelor of Arts degree in Public Policy and Administration. So those five programs that I've just mentioned uh, last, or four of them, are standalone degrees. Unlike the Bachelor of Arts, which I had said earlier, that can combine 
at subjects like history and geography. These others in the area of gender, counseling, psychology, psychology, and public policy are standalone degree programs. In our postgraduate uh, courses, we offer various masters and PhD programs that are offered by various departments. For example, if you're in geography, there are various areas of specialization at master's level and at PhD level. If you're, if, you're, if you're in the Department of Public Policy, again, you'll do a master's in public policy and administration, as well as advance at PhD level. Now, let us look at how the courses are structured in this school, how the units are structured. In, in this school, departments have their own unique way of choosing subject combination, like I had said earlier. So students in the school will be required to take three courses drawn from three departments in the first year and in the second year. And in the third and fourth year, you can decide either to take uh, a combination of two or one subject or one departmental subjects. For example, if you're taking a Bachelor of Arts degree with various specializations, in the first and second year, you will take courses from three departments like geography, history, and religious studies. Second year, you'll do the same. But when you go to third year, you may want to opt to go for two courses or just specialize in one area. So that in third year, you'll take two courses, geography, history, you drop one, maybe philosophy, and in the fourth year, you again take uh, geography history. We call it 3-3-2-2 three, three, two, two, uh, structure. You can also have another structure, which is 3-3-1-1 three, three, one, one structure. That means by the, third year, by the time you go to third year, you'll be more specialized because you'll only stick to one subject area. If it's philosophy, you pursue philosophy in your third year and your fourth year. That is a 3-3-1-1. Three, three, one, one. A 3-3-2-2, three, three, two, two, again, you, uh, you drop one subject because remember, first year and second year, you're taking three courses. But when you go to third year, then you drop one and you remain with two courses. So you go with those two courses in your third and fourth year year. Students are also allowed to major as well as minor. They are also th that category we call regular. For example, the, what I have called the, you take uh, three, three, two, two, you go on with those two courses up to the end will classify you as a regular student because you'll continue with two departments. You, however, you might want to actually, even if you're taking 3322, two, you may want to major in one area and minor in another one. If that is the case, if you want to major, for example, you're taking history and geography and you want to major in geography or political science, then you'll be required in year three and four to be taking eight course units in each academic year and four course units for the other subject that you are minoring in, in each academic year. So if you are a major in history and a minor in geography, it means that in your third and fourth year, you, you will take eight units in history, four units in geography. When you go to fourth year, the same thing happens. You take eight units in third year and four units. Sorry, if, if, if in the fourth year you do the same, you take eight units in history and four units in geography. So the, the difference between the minoring and majoring is that uh, one subject has uh, more weight, twice the weight of the other one. That way you'll be majoring in one area and minoring in another. However, if you decide just to be a regular student, then you just take equal units, six equal units every year, that is third year and fourth year, you take uh, six units, six units. And that way, you'll be having your 12 units per, per year. And 
each subject has an equal weight. So no subject is weightier than the other. Um, you may want to ask yourself, uh, what are the career prospects for students who undertake Bachelor of Arts programs? Um, you realize that, for example, I was talking about belonging to history department and taking subjects in history and political science or history and archaeology. That already, if you are specializing in your third year and fourth year in history, archaeology, or in, in political studies, then of course that takes you to organizations like museum, you have prospects to join museum or archives and other places that deal with uh, that kind of knowledge. But uh, as a BA student, you are open to take up jobs in public sector, in private sectors, uh, an administrator, in um, NGOs, be they local or international, uh, UN organizations. So you have a whole list. You, you are, you're very open in terms of since you, you have knowledge from various areas, then that also gives you a chance to look for prospects in various uh, fields in the job market. For those who will take religious studies, of course, we have this program we call Christian Muslim Ministries. You can serve in pastoral care, in counseling. So those are areas, some of the areas that you can actually uh, find yourself working in. And of course, having been exposed to research, you will also you can also be hired as a researcher. Because of the, we also teach languages and linguistics, you may also find yourself being involved in editorial work. So in other words, as a BA student, the, the world is open for you. It all depends on what you desire to be. And that perhaps will, is, is my advice. That guides you into the subject combination that you want to take. If, for example, you desire to be an editor or be involved in editorial work and um, mass media, then you may want you may find yourself actually going into this department that deals with linguistics and languages and all that because it will expose you to that field and that prepares you for that future career. If, of course, you want to be a public administrator, then uh, you will join public administration and public policy. You may also, if you belong to history department, that will, you may have an interest in taking courses in political science and government. So again, that all depends on what you would want to do after you have graduated from Kenyatta University. But the, the message here is that the programs we offer, since there are that many and they touch on various fields, then it all depends on what you want to be and what you want to do in future. And then that guides you into the kind of program that you want to undertake. I may, I may also want to advise that uh, once you register or as you register, you may also want to seek advice from the various uh, chairpersons that lead departments and mentors because we have student mentors uh, in our schools and each department has a student mentor. You may also want to discuss more with them so that they can guide you so that you don't start something and uh, midstream you feel this is not what you wanted to do and you find yourself again going back from the beginning and starting all over again. Uh, I want to give some piece of advice with regard to how you manage yourself now that uh, you have left high school. One of the things that uh, perhaps I'll want to say is that you will not be followed to do things. You know, in high school you had a program and perhaps a bell that reminded you on what to do. Here at the university, uh, we are required to conduct ourselves with a certain level of maturity because you have transitioned from secondary school to a university. And therefore, as much as the lecturers and the, the mentors will be telling you to take your studies seriously, it is incumbent upon you right from the beginning to take your studies seriously. 
because students fail and they're, discon uh, they're, they're discontinued. And you don't want to come this far having scored well and having succeeded in high school only to come to the university and you fail and you're discontinued. You don't want to do that. So take your studies seriously right from the beginning. Nobody will pacify you or come to your halls of residence to tell you wake up and go to class. Nobody will do that because there will be no bell. But it is incumbent upon you to know when you're supposed to go to class, the time you're supposed to be in the library. So the degree of self-management at the university is higher. You're required to manage yourself more than perhaps you used to do when you were in high school. It's also important for you to register units online. And if for one reason or another, you feel that you'd want to adjust the units or the courses that you have registered, again, you do that quite early because we work on set deadlines. And after the deadline, there is nothing you can do in terms of adjusting a course or including a course that you'd have wanted. So make sure that uh, in case you want to change your mind and maybe drop a course and pick another one, you do that quite on time, not just in this semester, but as you continue your life as a student in Kenyatta University. Um, it's also important for you to be visiting notice board quite regularly. I would recommend perhaps on a daily basis because uh, th there's no forum where we call you for parade to communicate what we want to tell you. All the communication, all the messages are on notice boards. And notice boards are at various places. So it's not just one area, but in, in, in your halls of residence, in outside the lecture halls, you'll find those notice boards everywhere. So it is important for you to always visit those notice boards and keep abreast, keep in step with what's happening at the university. So if there's a major announcement that uh, maybe the management has made, the vice chancellor has made, or even your dean or the chair, it's important that you visit that notice board so that you can get that information. So constant information. And here at the university, Information is constantly relayed to the students, but you must make effort to visit those notice boards in order to get that information. Let me touch on a very weighty matter here again in the life of a student. Class attendance. Class attendance is a must. Although nobody will come and push you to go to class, but it is required, there is a policy that you must attain a certain threshold. And if you don't, you'll not even be allowed to sit for your exams. So class attendance is taken very seriously. And if you don't achieve the threshold for class attendance, you'll find yourself being locked out of an examination, be it a continuous assessment test or the final exam. And therefore, it's important that you attend classes. If for one reason or another you are unable to attend classes, maybe you are sick, you'll be required to produce evidence that you actually visited a doctor and you maybe you had a sick of or something, but there must be some tangible, credible evidence from you if you are to be excused from class. It must be a reason that is accepted by the university. Oh, always remember, visit your school offices or your departmental offices if you have any issue for clarification or you have, an answer, you have a question, you need an answer, or maybe you need some help or guidance. The chairperson in your department is there to help you and also the dean's office is open to assist you. So don't die with your problems out there. We are here to assist you. We are here to help you. We are here to make sure that your study environment is conducive for you so that whatever you desire 
to gain and that's uh, a degree program at the end of the four years you will achieve what you have come for but if you have any challenge don't keep that challenge always come to our offices see your chairperson see the dean and they'll be able to help you also you'll be exposed to your, your class mentor also you see that class mentor and he or she will be in a position to help you uh, I mentioned about continuous assessment tests and the final exam, uh, that you not be allowed to sit for those exams if you have not reached a certain threshold in your class attendance. Uh, it's important to note that the continuous assessment tests uh, constitute 30% of the overall marks and you have to pass the continuous assessment tests and the final exam will constitute 70% of the overall marks and you should not miss or fail. Because failure means you'll be required to repeat uh, that course. Uh, I would also recommend that after each academic year is over, visit your, the, the dean's office so that you can get uh, provisional results or transcripts so that you can know how you are doing. And you can also prepare for the, for, for the future. If you're weak in a certain area, you'll be able to know. If there's an area that needs you to put more effort, you'll be required to know once you visit the school's examination office. They should be able to give you a printout of your result slip, and that will help you keep track on how you're progressing at Kenyatta University. So once again, I take this opportunity to first of all congratulate you for having been admitted into this great university and also welcome you to this university. And I tell you that... Uh, you have made the right decision to join Kenyatta University. We are here to work with you. We are here to assist you so that these four years that you'll be with us will be fruitful years that you will never regret. You'll always remember that this is where your foundation was laid in terms of your career. And we are there to work with you. So welcome and God bless. Mm -hmm.